We are in our outreach center tonight doing our Bible study in the outreach center rather than over at the uh, church. We may actually do this on a regular basis. It'll kind of be a nice uh, difference in environment, you know. And uh, so anybody watching us on the internet, you may notice there are some empty bookcases here. Uh, we've just assembled these. These are going to hold our library in the weeks to come. So tonight they're empty. There's an empty wall behind me that will not be empty in the weeks to come. We have things that will be going here as well. Uh, so the video may look a little tactile and simple tonight, but it'll look better in the future. Uh, we have been on a break for the last few weeks. We did, uh, Tommy and I went on our cruise, so we missed the first Tuesday night. And then there have been a couple of Tuesdays that we were trying to get this center organized and straightened out, so we went ahead and uh, uh, forfeited Bible study for, I believe, two Tuesday nights for that. And uh, so we had stopped in our walk through the book of Romans. We had just finished the eighth chapter. And boy, has this been an incredible Bible study. Honestly, this has been uh, just m almost mind-boggling. It's been so good. And so tonight, we're beginning approximately halfway through the book of Romans. We're actually beginning chapter 9 tonight. So I read to you Romans chapter 9, beginning at verse 1. And the Apostle Paul writes, it's, the language in the King James here can sound a little bit complex, so I'll try to read it so you can understand what I'm saying as I go. Paul said, For I say the truth in Christ, I lie not, my conscience also bearing me witness in the Holy Ghost, that I have great heaviness and continual sorrow in my heart. For I could wish that myself were accursed from Christ, for my brethren, my kinsmen, according to the flesh, who are Israelites, to whom pertaineth the adoption, and the glory, and the covenants, and the giving of the law, and the service of God, and the promises. Whose are the fathers, and of whom, as concerning the flesh, Christ came, who is over all, God blessed forever. Amen. Not as though the word of God hath taken none effect, for they are not all Israel which are of Israel. Neither, because they are the seed of Abraham, are they all children. But in Isaac shall thy seed be called, verse 8, that is, they which are the children of the flesh, these are not the children of God, but the children of the promise are counted for the seed. For this is the word of promise, at this time will I come, and Sarah shall have a son. And not only this, but when Rebekah also had conceived by one, even by our father Isaac, for the children being not yet born, neither having done any good or evil, that the purpose of God according to election might stand, not of works, but of him that calleth. It was said unto her, The elder shall serve the younger. As it is written, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. What shall we say then? Is there unrighteousness with God? God forbid. For he saith to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy, and I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. So I've just read verses 1 through 15 of Romans chapter 9. Now, it sounds a little bit confusing perhaps uh, just looking at the words. But we have to remember, let's go back to chapter 8, what we were talking about last time in our last session. 
we were talking about the concept of predestination. Now, it's so funny that there are many in the uh, fundamentalist and in the evangelical camps, as well as other theolog Christian theological camps, who just cringe at the notion of predestination. And they say, oh, no, 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 predestination conflicts with our already established doctrine of freedom of will and freedom of choice. The concept of predestination doesn't mix with what we teach about the freedom of will and freedom of choice. So therefore, predestination can't possibly be right. Well, maybe you need to rethink your thoughts concerning freedom of will and freedom of choice. Maybe you need to look at some other things. We were talking about the fact that Man does have freedom of will. Man does have freedom of choice. However, God has foreknowledge. Because God has foreknowledge, He knows before you were ever born, He knew if you'd ever choose to be saved. He knew before you were ever born, if this gospel was put in front of you, whether or not you would say yes or whether or not you would say no. So it's not that God per se chooses in advance, but he knows in advance, and because of that foreknowledge, his actions are based on that foreknowledge. So knowing, for instance, that someone is going to be uh, his servant in the future, he's acting on their behalf, like my Aunt Dorothy and Uncle Travis sing, God knew me before I knew him, and yet he loved me. He knew that one day I'd fail him, and yet he loved me. He knew me. He really knew me, and yet he loved me, and we met at Calvary. Yeah. I love, you know, Aunt Dorothy has said many times, she said, when I look back over my life, I see God working. Yep. Even before I was saved, even yeah, before yeah. I come to the Lord, yeah. I can yeah. see God was already working for me. He was already in my life, yeah. and this is because he knows. He knew you would be his long before you knew you'd be his. And mm -hmm. so the concept of predestination, boy, I'll tell you, you want to talk about, you want to start up a hot debate. If I allowed comments on YouTube, which I don't, because honestly, I'm just going to talk plain. There are too many ignorant and stupid people in the world. Yes. And without yes. fail, we wind up with all kinds of ridiculous comments and all kinds of ridiculous arguments and debates. And I'm, we're not there for that. And I don't have time to spend all day arguing and debating with people. But if you want to stir up a debate, you just start talking about predestination and see mm -hmm. if that doesn't just stir up a can of worms. Now... Understanding that chapter 8 was talking, Paul began to talk about the concept of predestination. Now, in chapter 9, what he is doing is, he is illustrating and he's helping us to understand how this concept of predestination works. Okay? He's talking about the fact in verse 1, he said, I say the truth in Christ, I lie not, my conscience also bearing me witness in the Holy Ghost, Verse 2, that I have great heaviness and continual sorrow in my heart. Verse 3, for I could wish that myself were accursed from Christ for my brethren, my kinsmen, according to the flesh. Verse 4, who are Israelites, to whom pertaineth the adoption and the glory and the covenants and the giving of the law and the service of God and the promises. Verse 5, whose are the fathers and of whom, as concerning the flesh, Christ came. Who is over all, God blessed forever. Amen. Now, all of that, what Paul was saying in a nutshell was, I bear a heavy burden for my Jewish brethren. Mm -hmm. That's what he was basically saying. Okay, He wow. said, I bear a heavy, very heavy burden for my Jewish brethren. Why? Well, because most of the Jewish people by this point were rejecting the gospel. Mm -hmm. The gospel was being more widely and more readily received in the Gentile community. Well, the Romans, this is a That's Gentile right. body. Right. He's writing to them, and he said, I have a heavy burden. You know, my conscience bears me witness. The Holy Ghost bears witness in me that I really do carry a very heavy burden for my fellow brethren in the flesh, the Jewish people. 
Right. Okay, that's basically what he was saying in all of that. Okay, he talks about here are a people that God called to do a very special work. You know, mm -hmm. here's the people that God ordained should be used for a very special purpose. It's mm -hmm. by them that the promise came. It's by them that the blessing came. It's by them that the giving of the law came. It's by them that the covenants, you know. And he say, now here, here's the people who are so special mm -hmm. in God's, uh, plan, and he said, and yet I carry such a heavy burden for these people. Mm -hmm. Okay, why? Well, because obviously they've rejected the gospel in most instances. And he goes on then to explain, however, that the, that the special place the people of Israel hold in the world and in the plan of God is after the flesh... And there's one thing Paul does here that's very interesting in chapter 9. He explains how that their place as people of promise is based upon not who their father is, even though the, that does play part. Abraham has to be the father. Mm -hmm. But that it also was contingent upon whom the mother was. Oh, In other words, right, that's right. It, could, it wasn't a matter of whoever Abraham sired children with, right. that all of those people were children of promise. No, they were not. The, the Lord promised Abraham that he <laughs> and Sarah would have a child. And so therefore, it is only... I'm going to blow this slide up so I can see it a little bit bigger. There we go. Uh, so it is only the children then that were born by reason of Abraham through Sarah right. that they would be called the children of promise. Okay? Right. And he goes on to say, uh, for instance, in verse number 6, Not as though the word of God hath taken none effect, for they are not all Israel, which are, uh, which are of Israel. So Paul is saying there's a deeper principle involved in reality as to who the people of promise are. Not everybody who is born uh, an Israelite is in fact a person of promise. Mm -hmm. Just uh, because you're born, uh, you mm -hmm. know, according to... Uh, the law, you're born a Jew, doesn't necessarily make you a Jew. It's just like it, he was talking before about being circumcised in the heart and mm -hmm. not being circumcised, you know. Mm -hmm. And so he said, yeah, there are some that are born Jew, but they're not really a Jew at heart. They're really mm -hmm. not, you know, they, 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 they haven't really partaken of the promise. Mm -hmm. But he goes on to say, neither because they are the seed of Abraham are they all children, this is where he says, it's not everybody who's born of Abraham who are all children, but in Isaac shall thy seed be called. Mm -hmm. So he's pointing to the fact that God was very specific in his promises to Abraham. And in his promise to Abraham, God said that it is in through Isaac. Yeah. That your seed shall be called. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So there's there's a very specific lineage here. Mm -hmm. People say, for instance, my mother just mentioned the other day how somebody of a uh, an uh, Arab nature mm -hmm. was talking to her the other day, and you know, he said, "Well, I don't understand because Abraham had Ishmael, and we're born of Ishmael, and mm -hmm. I don't understand why Isaac." Was. Well, the reason is simple. Paul's talking about it right here That's in Romans saying. chapter nine. This is exactly what Paul's talking about. He said, no, the promise of God was specific. The son God promised Abraham would be born through Sarah. The children of promise who would be born to Abraham would be born through Isaac. Right. Yep. So we have very specific guidelines here as to who the children of promise would be. So just because you're born of Abraham does not make you a child of promise. Right. You yeah. follow what I'm saying? All right. So, uh, verse 9, For this is the word of promise, 
at this time will I come, and Sarah shall have a son. Mm -hmm. So you see again, Paul is talking about the very specifics. When God speaks, God speaks specifically. I learned a lesson about this years ago. And I know the Lord did it on purpose to help me understand. I know He did. To help me understand this very principle right here. I was 17 years old, 16 years old, not quite 17. And I was going back to Texas as a teenager. And I had been in Texas. I had gone back up home to Connecticut. And I was taking a Greyhound back to Texas. I was practically broke. But I was going because I felt like God wanted me in Texas. And I had done a painting job for a lady, painted an apartment, made some money. So I'm going back to Texas, and I was saying, Lord, you are going to have to make a way for me. I believe you called me there, but you're going to have to make a way for me because I literally had enough money in my pocket for one night in a motel once I got back to Fort Worth and maybe a meal or two. But I literally, that's it. That's all the money I had. You talk about the Lord sending his disciples and telling when you go and preach and right. take neither script nor purse. You know, right. that's what I was doing, believe me. Mm -hmm. So anyway, so I'm on my way back to Texas, and I'm on that bus. And I'm scared out of my mind because I'm, you know, listen, everybody, any Christian has probably been at the place at some point in their life where they feel like they've heard from God. And you find out later you didn't hear from God at all. It was just your own head talking to you. You know, it was your own desires yeah. and your own, you know. It happens, it just, especially when you're 16 years old. Yeah. And I was scared to death. Lord, did I really hear from you? Am I really supposed to curse? It's kind of late to be asking this question <laughs> while I'm on the Greyhound, you know. So I said, Lord... I kept seeing signs along the highway that said deer crossing and all this, you know. And I said, Lord, if I'm doing the right thing and I'm going where you want me to go and I'm doing what you want me to do, I'll never forget it as long as I I said, I keep seeing these signs that say deer crossing. Now, we have not seen one deer. And I mean, it had been, this is going through Pennsylvania, and mom knows you, when yeah. you travel through Pennsylvania, you go hundreds of miles through Pennsylvania. Yeah. And you'll see these deer crossings. Now, you may not see a single deer, but you'll see. Or you'll see a whole bunch of dead Tons deer. of signs, you know. Yeah. Well, I didn't see any deer, and I, and, I, and I was fleecing the Lord. I said, Lord, if I'm really doing the right thing, and this is really what you want me to do, I said, let there be a herd of deer. See, I'm not asking to see a deer because there's a good chance I might see a deer anyway. Mm -hmm. So if I just said, let me see a deer, well, that would be, there's a good possibility mm -hmm. that could happen just by happen chance. You see mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So I said, Lord, let there be a herd of deer. Let there be a whole herd. Let me just see a great, uh, you know, mm -hmm. let there be a great big bunch of deer alongside of the road. Well, after a while, I fell asleep. <laughs> I wake up, and I'm sitting behind the bus driver. I wake up, and the bus driver's talking to the lady in the seat across from me on the front. And he said, I've been driving this route 25 years, and I've never seen that ever. And she said, oh, that was the most amazing thing I've ever seen. She said, that was incredible. Mm -hmm. And I'm sitting there, and I said, what, 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 what did y'all see? What, what did you think? I had no idea what they were talking about, you know. Yeah. The fallen star, you know. <laughs> and the bus driver said, there was a huge herd of deer beside the road. He said, there must have been a hundred of them. Oh my God. And he said, I've never seen anything like it. And I'm getting goosebumps just thinking about oh, it. Yep. And I sat there and as he said this, I mean, I just was feeling mm -hmm. the Holy Ghost, you know. Mm -hmm. And I said, Lord, that isn't fair. That isn't right. I asked you to let me see. He said, no, you did not. He said, let there be. You right? said, let there be. Uh, oh, boy. Oops. Oops. I'm going to tell you, people need to understand. Mm. I said it before, you know, while I was preaching a couple weeks ago. Here we serve a God who's designed a world of order and structure. Everything, there are laws that are absolute, you know, there are yep. things that work 
a certain way. You cannot change them no matter how hard you try. And yet we have people in our world who want to believe that God himself is abstract and God himself, oh, yeah. you know, uh, well, you know, truth is truth. What's true for you may not be true for me and what's true for me may oh, not be Lord. true for you. You know, um, everything is relative, you know, concerning God. And there are a lot of people who base their entire theology on the notion <laughs> that truth is relative. You know, well, Buddhism is true for Buddhists. Hinduism is true for the Hindu. You know, Christianity is true for the Christian. But that doesn't mean that Christianity is true for everybody. That doesn't mean Hinduism is true for you to follow. And in this passage, Paul is talking about how very specific God's promise to Abraham was. And how God carried it out exactly as he said. He didn't make any detours. He didn't make any turns. That's right. He told Abraham, you and Sarah are going to have a kid. He didn't tell Abraham, run off with Sarah's handmaiden to have a baby. Right. Mm -hmm. So just because Abraham did that, God didn't suddenly change his plan and right. approach things. Well, okay, I'll go the way. See, this helps to combat the notion which I've been teaching for decades is a false notion. That there is a perfect will of God and there is a permissive will of God. Right. Baloney. There right. is a perfect will of God and that is what we ought to seek to walk in. Period. Yep. Period. God does not alter his plan to accommodate your wanting to take a different direction. It doesn't work that way. Mm -hmm. If that had been the case, God could have said, well, all right, you've had Ishmael. Let's go ahead and use him then. That's not how it worked. God said, no. Right. I specifically said, well, the experience I had taught me that when you deal with God, you're dealing with someone who's very specific. Yeah. He doesn't play any games. He doesn't take any turns. He, you know, you, you don't approach God carelessly. Right. So all of a sudden I learned, and you got to remember, I was not asking God. People say, well, when you pray, you got to pray specifically. No, you don't. You can pray for a car. You don't have to pray for a Cadillac. Mm -hmm. Okay. You can pray for a car. Maybe you need a van, a minivan or whatever for your family. Okay, pray for a van. But you don't have to tell the Lord what year, what model, what color, what kind of interior. You know, you don't have to do all that. All right. I was not praying for anything. I was not trying to exercise charismatic magic. Mm -hmm. like I preached in recent weeks. Mm -hmm. But I was fleecing the Lord. Mm -hmm. And the Lord used that opportunity to teach me a lesson mm -hmm. about how specific He is. Yep. And how yep. when you're communicating and dealing with me, I'm going to be right down to the letter of what mm -hmm. you say. And, and mm -hmm. you know whatever we agree on, I'm going to do exactly That's what right. we've agreed on. That's right. So I said at that point, I said, all right, Lord, you got away with that one. <laughs> you got away with that one. I said, now, and you remember Gideon, when Gideon fleeced yeah. the Lord, he fleeced the Lord the first time, and then he turned around and kind of reversed, reversed it, it yeah. you know. So I fleeced the Lord again. I said, all right, Lord, I said, this happened. Let me see <laughs> with my own eyes. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> see, I knew yeah. to ask him specifically. I said, let me see with my own eyes. Let me see a fawn, mm -hmm. a little baby deer, all by its lonesome. Just let me see that. Mm -hmm. Why would that be unusual? Well, because normally they travel with the mother. Right. You don't usually see a baby deer or fawn by itself, okay? So again, I'm, I'm making it hard enough so it's not necessarily what you would naturally see. Mm -hmm. You see. I said, let me see a fawn. Well, we're driving down the road. I, I don't even know what that far down the road. All of a sudden, on the side of the road, there's headlights catch, and the bus driver said, oh, look here now. And he actually kind of slowed down. Mm-hmm little bit and we drove and there's this beautiful little baby farm little thing on the side of the road and I looked at it and God is my witness as my witness that fawn looked right at me mm -hmm. <laughs> and 
I'm 16 years old, fleecing God, and that fawn looked right at me, I swear to God. And its little ear just went and kind of twitched a time or two. Almost like it was waving at me, you know. And when that happened, I just knew. I said, okay, I know I'm on the right track. This is, I am doing what God wants me to do. I am going where the Lord wants me to go. And I could tell you more about all that story, but I won't because it's not pertinent to our Bible study tonight. So God had made a very specific promise to Abraham concerning his lineage and his offspring. And the offspring that God spoke of were going to come through Sarah. Mm -hmm. When Isaac came, God spoke to Abraham again and said, through Isaac. Mm -hmm. So he was very specific about what he was going to do and how he was going to do it. And uh, it's important to understand this. This is why we preach the apostolic gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sin, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Why? Because God don't play games. When God gives the message, when God gives the plan, when the Lord says how He wants it done, that is how it is to be done. Amen. Yep. You don't decide, well, we decided that people could be converted by praying the sinner's prayer. We decided all they have to do is pray this prayer after me. Well, it's great that you've done that, mm -hmm. but that is not what God said. That is not That's what the right. Word of God said. That is not how it's laid out in Scripture. And if you think God's going to honor your revision, right. you don't understand how God works. Look at Romans 9. Mm -hmm. God works the way God works. He does things the way He has ordained and He has laid it out to do. All right. So then he, uh, Paul said in verse 8, I repeat, that is, they which are the children of the flesh... These are not the children of God, but the children of the promise are counted for the seed. So now here's, what, here's where Paul is trying to help them understand that the promise that God made to Abraham was as much a spiritual promise mm -hmm. as it was a natural promise. Uh -huh. He said it's not just about the children that are born through Sarah through Isaac, mm -hmm. so on and so forth. No, no, no. Mm -hmm. He said, it's not that the children of the promise are, uh, uh, are strictly those that are of the flesh. He said, but the children of the promise are counted for the seed. So you and I today are considered Abraham's seed according mm -hmm. to the promise he made yeah. to Isaac. Mm -hmm. Are you following? Mm -hmm. Because there was a spiritual element in God's promise to Abraham mm -hmm. concerning the baby he would have with Sarah, mm -hmm. who was to be named Isaac, whom God promised Abraham he would bless and the nations of the world would call him blessed. Mm -hmm. Okay? All right. So, he said in verse, uh, <clears throat> uh, verse 9, for this is the word of promise, at this time will I come and Sarah shall have a son. And not only this, but when Rebekah also had conceived by one, even by our father Isaac, for the children being not yet born, neither having done any good or evil, that for the purpose of God, according to the election, might stand, not of works, but of him that calleth, it was said unto her, The elder shall serve the younger. As it is written, Jacob have I loved, and Esau have I hated. Now, here's, listen, oh, this is cool. This, this gets really cool. Paul's talking about predestination. He's kind of continuing his thoughts on predestination. Mm -hmm. You're born a Jew... You're born a child of promise. There's no free will. Right. Mm. Where's the free will in that? Right. There's no free will. No. If you're born of, of Abraham, you're born a child of promise. You're under the covenant God made with Abraham. You're part mm -hmm. of the promise. You're part of the seed. There's, there's no free will in that. There's no freedom of choice in that. 
But then he goes on and he said, but now when we get, first we have Abraham having Isaac, he said, then Isaac in turn has, through his wife, Rebecca, he said, now he, Isaac has twins with Rebecca. Now the way that things are supposed to work, the eldest, mm -hmm. the firstborn, mm -hmm. is the one who inherits, you know, from the top down. Mm -hmm. He said, but it didn't work that way. He said, Esau was born first. Mm -hmm. Isaac was, excuse me, Jacob was born second. Mm -hmm. He said, but even before they were born, mm -hmm. it was told Rebekah, the elder shall serve the younger. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's right. We're talking about predestination. Mm -hmm. We're talking about pre-knowledge. Mm -hmm. Now, this is all within the context of they're all being born within the Jewish family. They're all mm -hmm. being born as children of promise. Yep. There's no choice there. But at the same time, you've got two that are born at the same time, although one is born slightly earlier, so that supposedly puts him ahead of the game. Right. And yet, before they're ever born, Rebecca gets the message, mm -hmm. the elder shall serve the younger. Yep. Esau, excuse me, Jacob have I loved, Esau have I hated. So... They're not hated in the sense of, of nasty and hateful. Right. This is where people, again, this is where we read biblical language and we don't understand sometimes. You know, yep. uh, the word of God said, any man that will not follow after me and hate his father and his mother and his sisters and his brethren. The Lord Jesus is obviously not saying he wants you to be hateful. Mm -hmm. Okay, The term in that instance simply means that you... You literally just kind of push them away. You have to be willing to leave them. You know, that's not even, you just, you just set it aside. I don't want this. This is my preference here. And so anyway, it's the same context that Paul is talking here. Uh, and the same thing that God was saying. So in other words, by no means did he hate Esau yeah. in the sense that we would think of hate. But he rejected Esau. He pushed Esau aside mm -hmm. in preference of Jacob. And uh, so now we say, okay, now wait a minute. So basically, Paul, what you're saying is God had this plan. Abraham's going to have a child with Sarah. They named that child Isaac. Mm -hmm. Isaac, in turn, has children. But you're saying, Paul, that... Everything just didn't fall into perfect place. Everything didn't just go according to the natural order. Right. You know, there's an old saying, there's an exception to every rule. Mm -hmm. I preached a sermon on that years ago. Mm -hmm. There's an exception to every rule. <laughs> this, this gets exciting. Mm. This is what Paul's talking about. There's an exception to every rule. Esau's born first, and yet Esau is set aside, and Jacob is preferred. When we speak of uh, our forefathers in the spirit, we speak of Abraham, Isaac, Isaac and Jacob. And Jacob. Yep. You don't even hear Esau's name mentioned. Right. He's not even the funny uncle. Okay. <laughs> we don't talk about Esau, because God set Esau aside in preference mm -hmm. of Jacob. We talk Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. God himself declares... I am the God of Abraham, Isaac, Isaac and, and Jacob. Jacob. Yep. But Jacob came into the plan as an exception to the rule. There was kind of a, a little jig, you know, there was kind of a little change in plans mm -hmm. for Jacob to be included. This is why Paul said in verse 14, What shall we say then? Is there unrighteousness with God? God forbid. So Paul says, some might suggest, well then God didn't do right. Mm -hmm. God didn't follow the plan. He did not follow the, the way things are supposed to fall. That's right. Listen to me carefully now because this is where it gets exciting. 
God does not let the flesh dictate to him. Amen. Are you hearing me now? Yep. Your, whoo, glory, mm -hmm. your situation mm -hmm. and your circumstance in life in the flesh mm -hmm. does not affect God. Amen. Mm. God gave the promise and the blessing and the birthright, oh hallelujah, amen. to the one who wanted it the most. Right, amen. Esau, woo, oh, glory. Amen. Esau was willing to sell his birthright amen. for a bowl of soup. Yes, amen. Jacob wanted that birthright. Yep. Mm -hmm. Wow. Oh my God, have mercy. Amen. Honey. It don't matter what your circumstance in the flesh is. It does not dictate to God whether or not you can be saved. Hmm. Salvation goes to those that want it. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Those who are willing to lay hold of Amen. it. Those who are willing to grab hold of it and fight for it. They Amen. will have it. Amen. That's the lesson we learn yes, from did. Jacob and Esau. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Isn't that exciting? Yes. Glory to God. So God says, even though at a surface level it's supposed to work this way. Right. Mm -hmm. There is an undercurrent. And that undercurrent is me. Mm -hmm. And I reserve the right to Will as I will, to do right. as I Amen. do, to purpose as I purpose, Amen. anywhere in this process. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Yep. Verse 15. Look at what Paul finishes this portion with. For he, God, saith to Moses, I will have mercy oh, on whom I will have mercy, and I will have compassion on whom I will have mercy. Compassion. Hallelujah Amen. to God. Oh, my yes. Lord, have Amen. mercy. You see, God is saved. The underlying current is this. The flesh may go one way, but at any moment in time, if I decide that I want to go in a different direction than would otherwise be dictated by the flesh, I will go in that direction. Again, we get into the principle, man looks on the outward, God looks on right. the heart. Mm -hmm. Man looks on the outward. Esau was born first. That's mm -hmm. right. God mm -hmm. looks on the heart, but Jacob wants it. Yeah, mm -hmm. right. Now, did God make Jacob the supplanter? Did God make Jacob the crafty one, the shifty one, so that he would do the things that no? God didn't make Jacob do those things, but he knew Jacob would. Before Jacob was ever born. Because his mama favored him. Before Jacob was ever born, God knew the effect his mother's favor would have. Mm -hmm. He knew the personality Jacob would have. Mm -hmm. He knew that Esau would be one who did not appreciate or value his birthright. He knew Jacob would be one who would appreciate and value that birthright. Do you follow what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So again, the concept of predestination is based on foreknowledge. Mm -hmm. It's not about God sets it up yeah. so that it works this way. No, no, it's foreknowledge, okay? Mm -hmm. And so God finishes out in verse 15, say, For he saith to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy, and I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. Yes. Our church is built upon this Amen. very verse. Amen. The theology of the one church is based upon, not this alone, but heavily upon this truth. Mm -hmm. I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy. And I will have compassion upon whom I will have compassion. Amen. God's favor <laughs> rested upon Jacob because not because God simply chose to favor Jacob, but because Jacob fought mm -hmm. 
mm -hmm. for that favor, mm -hmm. including fighting with God. That's right. Having his hip displaced or whatever. He wrestled with the angel of the Lord. Mm -hmm. said, I will not let you go until you bless me. Right. Mm -hmm. He said, I've got everybody on this planet recognizing that I now am the true owner of mm -hmm. Esau's birthright. Mm -hmm. Everybody on this planet understands that I legitimately possess Esau's birthright. But I now need heaven <laughs> to recognize the same. I need God to recognize the same. I need you to understand this, Lord. I need you to understand. I wanted this. I got it. It's mine fair and square. Hallelujah to God. God said, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy. I'll tell you, every foolish person out there in the church world today who thinks they can dictate according to some issue in the flesh. Right, that's right. Whether someone will or will not be saved has no knowledge of the truth of God's word. They have no knowledge of the truth of God's word. They don't understand that God, in the end still yet reserves the right to do according to his own will and purpose. That's right. And his will and purpose is based upon not the dictates of the flesh, not the situations that are in the flesh, but his dictates are based upon what? The condition of the heart. Mm -hmm. Where the heart is at. Mm -hmm. Oh, hallelujah. I'm going to tell you, isn't that exciting? Yes, uh, amen. Amen. Uh, so, I, I guess we could actually move forward tonight if we want to. We've got plenty of time. Amen. All right. Moving forward then in verse 9. Paul said in verse 16, So then it is not of him that willeth, mm -hmm. nor of him that runneth, but of God that showeth mercy. For the scripture saith unto Pharaoh, Even for this same purpose have I raised thee up, that I might show my power in thee, and that my name might be declared throughout all the earth. Therefore hath he mercy on whom he will have mercy, and whom he will he hardeneth. Now, this is a truth that Always uh, talk about something that amazes me. Fundamentalists and evangelical Christians in our world today are so blind to this truth, it's not even funny. And I have to admit, growing up in the church the way I did, in the Assemblies of God, I spent the better part of my life as blind as the bat to this as well. Mm -hmm. People love to blame the enemy for, oh, Obama, he's just trying to destroy our nation. Oh, he's just there, you know. Blah, 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 blah. All this, why, well, he's the devil, he's the Antichrist. Blah, 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 blah. Okay. I tried to explain to people uh, when he was running for the first time, I tried to explain to people. I don't care whether I like him or don't like him. I agree with him or I don't agree with him. Here's what God has spoken to my spirit. He's the man God wants in there. That's mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. That's what God spoke to me. That's mm -hmm. right. Doesn't have anything to do mm -hmm. with whether I agree with him, whether I like him, whether I think he's Lucifer, whether I think he's Jesus Christ reincarnate. It doesn't matter. None of that matters. All I know is what the Spirit of God spoke to me and said, whatever this man does, good or bad, whether he brings hurt and damage to our nation or whether he miraculously heals every hurt that ever was, no matter what he does, mm -hmm. it's all part of God's plan because That's he's right. the one God wants in there. That's right. Mm -hmm. Amen. I believe, you all know this, I've talked about this, I won't go into great detail tonight, I believe the other shoe is yet to drop concerning Mr. Obama. Mm -hmm. I believe there's something going to come somewhere toward the end of his term, mm -hmm. somewhere around the end of his term, that is, is going to really stir up havoc. 
in this country. Mm -hmm. This is something God showed me before the man ever got elected the first time. Mm -hmm. Now, knowing that, do I oppose him being present? No, because God's already spoken to me. Mm -hmm. That's all part of his plan. That's right. What is coming is supposed to come. Mm -hmm. We got Christians in the world today want to believe that, oh, bless God, we're never supposed to go through persecution. We're never right. supposed to, oh, oh, God, help us. You know, what a bunch of wimps. What a bunch of sissies mm -hmm. in the church world we have today. It is just amazing to me how ridiculous and absurd the church world is today. I, mm -hmm. I heard, and I like Jim Baker. You know, I like him okay. I heard him on TV just was it this morning? And he's talking about, you know, uh, you can believe what you want to believe. You can do what you want to do. I don't care how you feel about marriage or how you feel about this or that. But don't you dare come after my freedoms. And, of course, everybody in the audience is just, woo, you know, going crazy. And I'm sitting there and I'm thinking to myself, you know, the church should be the last people on earth who are saying, Peace and safety. Mm -hmm. Right, because, yep. It'll always be what it's always been. Mm -hmm. We should right. be the last people That's on the right. planet Amen. who are saying that. When the Word of God tells us plainly that the closer we come to the end time, we're going to be delivered before judges, we're going to be delivered before kings and princes. Mm -hmm. The Word of God tells us this. Why in the world? How can you call yourself a Bible believer? Mm -hmm. And yet the prophecy of Scripture, as it begins to manifest itself, you're fighting against it. Right. That's What's right. wrong with you? What in the world is wrong with you? That's right. And it's like, uh, you know, this situation with the governor in uh, Houston. And she subpoenaed the sermon notes oh. from some high profile preachers from some large the, churches. The mayor? What she the mayor, yeah, yeah, the mayor. She was trying to demonstrate yeah. that there are there is a very organized, structured anti LGBT right movement. Right. Mm -hmm. I understand her thinking, I think she was a little dopey. <laughs> To approach things the way she did, because any idiot could tell you she was going to open a can of worms she didn't want to deal with. Yeah. But she apparently didn't have enough sense to see that, and she opened a can of worms she don't want to deal with. So now we've got all these Christian people, oh, persecution! we got this queer politician coming after our freedoms. No, the queer politician was not coming after your freedoms. The queer politician was not trying to enact a law that says you cannot preach an anti-gay message. That is not what she was trying to do. And anybody with any brains knows that is not what she was trying to do. But she was trying to show that this anti-gay fervor is not some passive little thing that just kind of runs right. through society at, at some vague mm -hmm. level. No, there are people who are spearheading it and who are getting up in their pulpits and preaching it like, you know, and that's mm -hmm. what she was trying to illustrate. Now, I understand that, but I'm a reasonable thinking human being rather than an insane lunatic <laughs> fundamentalist. Mm. So... But you hear these preachers, you know, oh, they're coming after our feet. Well, even if that be the case, <coughs> why would you be surprised? Mm -hmm. right. Are you so foolish mm -hmm. as to disbelieve the Word of God? Mm -hmm. Are you going to stand there and say, as the Word of God teaches us, as things have been, so shall they always be, when we know that it's not the case? Mm -hmm. You know that's not the case. You know that we cannot rest on our laurels and assume that the liberties and the freedoms we've had for a certain number of years, we cannot just sit back and say, well, we'll always have those. It's, no, we will not always have those. Right. Uh, you know, the truth, and I could go into great detail on this, but I won't. The truth of the matter is, historically, mm -hmm. a democracy has never existed on planet Earth for more than about 200 years. Yeah. And there is a very consistent uh, pattern mm -hmm. where the destruction of the democracy comes about 
And without fail, it will end with a dictator. Hmm. It'll end with a dictator. Hmm. And so, you know what? Historically, if we look at the record, mm -hmm. honey, we've hit our expression day. Mm -hmm. Boy, we right. are, and let me tell you, if you look at the, the track record of history, what brought about the destruction of the uh, democracies has always been, listen to me now, mm -hmm. for all these these people out there who want to blame the queers for everything. Yeah. It has always been the lust mm -hmm. and the desire for wealth and power. That's right. The word of God said it is the love of money that is the root of That's all right. evil, not who has sex with who or That's how they right. have sex. Right, amen. The word of God says the love of money is amen. the root of all evil. When it's all said and done, what is going to destroy America is greed. Amen. And any idiot that understood history would understand that this is what destroyed ancient Rome. This That's is right. what destroyed many civilizations, mm -hmm. Greece, the ancient Greece. Right. This is what destroyed all of these uh, that, that even experimented with democracy. Because democracy cannot really sustain itself over an extended period of time. The concept of democracy is that the people rule. That's, mm -hmm. that's what democracy is supposed to stand for. Mm -hmm. Well, the people rule until the people with all the money mm -hmm. are they're able to control it. That's right, mm -hmm. until they're able to gain control and they're able to manipulate. Well, that's honey, right. they've been doing that now for decades. Our government has been owned by mm -hmm. corporations and companies right. for decades. We, we passed that milestone so long ago, it's not even funny. Yeah. Okay? So, uh, so the, the concept then, what I was getting at is, the concept then that, uh, you know, oh, Obama is this horrible thing, and this person is horrible, and oh, look at this judge and what this judge is doing. And yeah. blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Listen, God exalts people according to his purpose and That's his right. will. Amen. In the ninth chapter of the book of Romans, Paul is talking about the fact that even those verses 16 through 18 roughly, uh, he's talking about even those who appear to be working evil or who appear to be working in opposition to God, mm -hmm. God has put them in place as well. Just like he did the Pharaoh Just in like Egypt. he did Pharaoh in Egypt. You know, for his purpose. He could easily have had a Pharaoh in Egypt who would simply have said, okay, y'all want to leave? Go ahead, go. That's right. Mm -hmm. But had that been the case, mm -hmm. then God could never have demonstrated his power. Mm -hmm. He could never have demonstrated uh, himself toward the false gods of Egypt. That's right. But because the Pharaoh who was in place was placed there by God, and he was contrary to the notion of allowing the Israelites mm -hmm. to go, God was able to do things that demonstrated who he was. That's right. And he was able, and listen, those things that he demonstrated, uh, not only did those things speak to the Jewish people, to the Hebrew people, mm -hmm. but they spoke to the Egyptians as well. Mm -hmm. you got to remember, mm -hmm. listen to me now, a lot of Egyptians left with the Jews. Mm -hmm. That's right. Why? Because they saw all that, right? They didn't believe My God never did anything like that. That's right. The gods I serve never did anything like that. Mm -hmm. Every god I serve, the god of the Nile, the god mm -hmm. represented by flies, the god represented by mm -hmm. this, the, the, you know, the mm -hmm. cattle, all of my gods were humiliated mm -hmm. and embarrassed. By the God of Israel. I think I'd rather go with them because Amen. their God appears to be far more real. Yes. You see, people don't understand. We got people in the church world today, bless God. Oh, they believe gay marriage is sin. They believe gay marriage, we're not even going to get into that foolishness. 
They believe it's just the worst evil that ever hit the planet. Well, if you believe the word of God, which you don't, and I, and I, listen, if there's anything I've learned over the last few years, I grew up in the fundamentalist church. Those are the most unbible believing people that right. walk the face of planet Earth. Mm -hmm. They say they believe the Bible, the whole Bible, every bit of the Bible. And honey, they know one of them that isn't a lion sack of mud. Amen. I grew up in that movement. That is the most unbelieving, the most Bible refuting bunch of people you will ever come across in your mm -hmm. entire life. Mm -hmm. Because if they believed the Bible, they would be thrilled that all this sinfulness was just flowing over mm -hmm. all over the place. Well, Brother Charles, they'd be thrilled. What are you, crazy? Mm -hmm. There's a little Bible passage that says, Where sin doth abound, yes. grace doth what even more, more abound. abound. Amen. Mm -hmm. That's right. You want to see revival? Mm -hmm. Do you know why there was revival at the turn of this century? You know why there was a holiness revival when uh, uh, the Wycliffe brothers were running loose? And, and the, or the Wesley, I'm sorry, the Wesley brothers were running around preaching. You know why there was a revival? Because at that time in history, things were as sinful and chaotic as they could be. Mm -hmm. People in this country were drunkards mm -hmm. and slothful, mm -hmm. more so than they had ever been. Go back in history. Read your history books, people. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And the worse it got, mm -hmm. the more opportunity there was for God. That's right. If Amen. you believe gay marriage and homosexuality and all these things are so horrible and so evil and so wicked and blah, 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 then you should be grateful mm -hmm. for every advance made by these movements. Mm -hmm. What? Brother, are you out of your mind? No. You should be grateful. There's an old saying, give a thief enough rope and he'll hang himself. Yeah. If these things are what you claim they are, mm -hmm. then gay folks having marriage should prove in short order. Mm -hmm. That homosexuality is everything you say it is. That's right. Your problem is you're terrified it's not going to prove your point. That's mm -hmm. right. And you're going to be proven wrong and you're going to be made to look stupid. How many people claimed when they were trying to desegregate American society... Yeah. How many people claim, Mother, because I remember even as a young man, yeah. I remember people saying, oh, if blacks start moving into white neighborhoods, why, you know, society is just going to turn into it. It's just going to become a, a horrible yeah. mess. And blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Oh, everything's going to go haywire. The country's going to fall apart. Yeah. All this horrible stuff was going to happen right. if people of different races and different nationalities were all allowed to live in the same neighborhood. That was yeah. going to happen, Booby. Then I heard it when it came to biracial marriages. Oh, yeah. Interracial marriages. Oh, if you allow white people to marry black people, if you allow Hispanics to marry Asians, if you allow Asians to marry black people, oh, all of yeah. society will cave in on itself and it'll yeah. explode. Why, the whole world will fall apart. But... Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's right. Interestingly enough, mm -hmm. we find over and over again that all these prophets of doom have been wrong, wrong, That's right. wrong, wrong, and wrong. Mm -hmm. Amen. They are scared out of their minds that they've been preaching a homophobic, hateful, nasty, judgmental, critical, idiotic, uneducated, ignorant message for decades and centuries and that if gay people are given enough opportunity, they will prove all of these sermons wrong. Mm -hmm. That's right. And I got news for you. That's exactly what's going to happen. It's exactly what's going to happen. I'll tell you a little secret, honey. Some of the best people in the world 
are some of the most sinful people in the world. Yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. You don't have to be a godly person to be a good person. That's mm -hmm. right. There are people in our world who are wife swappers. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, but we don't talk about this. Do you know there is a whole subculture in American society? Mm -hmm. And it is a huge movement. Yep, it is. We're not talking about some little. I have members of my own family uh, that I know at one time, thank God they're not in it anymore, but at one time they were part of the wife swapping crowd. They had a show about it on All in the Family back in the yeah. 1970s. You yes. remember that? Yes, I do. Yes. They used to call them swingers. They still call them swingers. Edith didn't know what it was. And, you know, Edith didn't know what she was getting herself into. She answered an ad thinking these people wanted to make friends. And Rue McClanahan, and uh, I can't think of that fellow's name off the top of my head, but... Mm -hmm. If they weren't looking to make friends. They were looking to swap out and have mm -hmm. a party, you know. Lord. This has been a part of our society now for God only knows how long. Mm -hmm. There are sinful things which have been part of our culture. There are immoral things that have been part of our culture. There are ungodly things that have been part of our culture for centuries. Don't have jack squat to do with homosexuals or homosexuality. Right. Don't have anything. Those issues don't have anything to do with it. Never there is enough preached. vulgarity and nastiness in heterosexual culture to choke yeah. a chicken. Mm. Choke an elephant. And yet we have people who act like gay, lesbian people are the bane of our society. And bless God, they're going to destroy everything. Honey, i got news for you. Yep. There has been... So much going on in terms of immorality and ungodliness in this country. If that was going to destroy the nation, it would already have been destroyed. Amen. Those are not the things that destroy a nation. People's morality is not what destroys a nation. People's sexual habits are not what destroy a nation. What destroys nations is greed mm -hmm. and lust for power and control. Amen. That is what destroys the nation. What destroys the nation is when one class of people looks mm -hmm. down upon another class of people mm -hmm. and sees them as being without value or worth. That's it right. amazes me how there are people in our in our nation who are calling for gay lesbian. All oh, gay lesbian people ought to be stoned. They ought to be killed. They ought to be shot. You know, blah, 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 blah. and these poor moronic people have no idea in the world, don't have a clue in the universe who in our world is gay or lesbian. Mm -hmm. That's right. They don't have a clue. You see, it's one thing <laughs> to be prejudiced toward black folks because you can tell a black folk when you see them. Mm -hmm. Now, there are those that are, that are in fact born of uh, a black lineage who are passable, as the old saying goes, and you know, and they don't necessarily look as though they're of African heritage, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, that, of course, you know, again, that kind of lends itself to the old rule that there's a, an exception to every rule. Mm -hmm. However, for the most part, mm -hmm. you can tell a person's race, in, in essence, by their appearance. Mm -hmm. So the prejudice and what have you, the hate, mm -hmm. Uh, can be exercised at a much more obvious level because it's much more obvious to see who's who. Right. When you want to hate against gay lesbian people and you want to be nasty toward gay lesbian people, honey, you don't know who you're hating and you don't know who you're hating. You don't know right. who you're looking at. Amen. The CEO of Apple Computers just came out. The man's up in his 50s or so. Mm -hmm. He just came out. He said, in the business world, you know, people... There's a lot of people who are part of the LGBT community. That's right. Some of the most successful, some of the wealthiest people in this planet. Mm -hmm. Some of the people who have made this world what it is today. Right. And who have brought so many of the innovations that you appreciate and you enjoy and you mm -hmm. value into our world today. That's right. So many of those people are part of the LGBT community. That's right. And yet we got people, I oh, we ought to just kill them. We ought to just do away with them. Ignorant, stupid, it's foolish. Mm -hmm. You have no idea 
how much of a positive impact those people have on our society. I, I you know, I could, I could go into just the idea of uh, gay and lesbian people going to a neighborhood. You let LGBT people start moving into a specific neighborhood that's all run down and tore up, you know, and the houses are falling down. And within a matter of 10 years, that neighborhood is one of the most desirable neighborhoods in the entire city. Mm -hmm. There are cities all over the world, not just in our country, all over the world that have experienced renaissance in various neighborhoods and communities all because of LGBT people and their money it's right. and their creativity. Amen. And dare I say their desire to build things up and not tear it down. That's right. You don't see gay people moving into an area and all of a sudden the area is dilapidated and tore up. Mm -mm. It doesn't happen that way. Mm -mm. Never has happened that way. That has never been the history yeah. if you look at things. So Paul is saying here, For the scripture saith unto Pharaoh, Even for this same purpose have I raised thee up, that I might show my power in thee, and that my name might be declared throughout all the earth. Therefore hath he mercy on whom he will have mercy, and on uh, and whom he will he hardeneth. Folks, there is not a person on this planet, whether you like them or dislike them, whether you count them godly or ungodly, whether you count them as a friend of God or an enemy of God, there is not a person on this planet that is not serving God's purpose and God's function, that they are not doing what God would have them to do in their existence here. When you stand there and say, we need to eradicate these, we, that'd be like, you know... <laughs> Honestly, if America were existent when the Jews were trying to get out of Egypt, we probably would have sent somebody from the CIA in to, to uh, kill off Pharaoh. <laughs> we probably would have. Well, yeah. We need to help these poor Jewish people. They're trying to gain their freedom. Right, but don't Let's assassinate the Pharaoh. Yeah. Let's, mm -hmm. let's displace him and put somebody we like in his place. Do you follow what I'm saying? Yeah, that's hey, that's right. our foreign policy. That's, that's how right. this nation operates. That's how Saddam Hussein got into power and then they took him out. Exactly. But that's what happened. But see, we, we don't understand. Listen, folks, God knows what he's doing. And you know, yeah. and I'll close with this tonight. A little bit early, but we'll mm -hmm. close. You know... Again, it amazes me how people that call themselves Christians just, they have no concept of God's word at all. They have no knowledge of God's word. Jesus said to the scribes and Pharisees, you know, ye err in that you know not the scriptures. That's right. The thing that makes you a moron is the fact that you do not have any working knowledge of the word of God. If you had any knowledge of the word of God, you wouldn't be half as stupid as you are. I'm just putting it in plain English. And that's how I feel about a lot of the evangelical and a lot of the fundamentalist community. They wouldn't be half as dumb as they are if they understood the Word of God. Yeah. Oh, there are people just have a fit at the one church. Well, bless God, you, you take in gay and lesbian people. You take in transgender people. You welcome everybody that wants to know God and everybody that wants to serve God. And you do a, oh, what horrible theology. What a mess. Over the years, I've gotten everything from death threats to, you know, all kinds of negativity and nastiness. Mm -hmm. Yet Jesus said, listen to me, if they're not against us, they're for us. They're with us. That's right. That's right. If they're not against us, they're with us. That's right. Cracks me up. Oh, gay folk, we're supposed to be fighting... Gay folks are supposed to be fighting to shut up the religious right and to take away their religious liberties. Really? Well, I'm going to tell you, I'm sure not part of that army because I'd be fighting against myself because I want religious liberty. Right, amen. So why would I be trying to shut down religious liberty? Mm -hmm. Why do you think 
LGBT people are fighting so hard to be in the church and to be part of the church. Why do you think there are gay Baptist organizations, gay Mormon organizations, gay Jehovah's Witness organizations, wow. gay uh, Pentecostal organizations? Listen, I could t take you online. We have it on one of our websites. I have links mm -hmm. to organizations, of course, not obviously not the gay Mormon and the J gay Jehovah's Witness, but they mm -hmm. actually exist. Oh, wow. Don't kid yourself. They exist. Mm -hmm. All these people are clamoring to be part of the faith that they embrace. You know, mm -hmm. they're, they're well, the Bible said the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Right. Mm -hmm. The Bible said the fool has said in his heart there is no God. That's right. These people are not saying there is no God. That's right. These people aren't saying there is no God. They're acknowledging there's a God. They're believing there is a God. Mm -hmm. And they're trying to be included in their faith, you know, whatever faith that might be. There, there's even gay, literally, I'm not kidding, I could literally take you to the website. You can find them if you do a search online mm -hmm. for gay uh, Muslims. Oh, my God. oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Gay lesbian people all over the world, they want to be included in their faith. Mm -hmm. they, they, they don't believe that who, that who they are as an LGBT person excludes them from faith in God. Right. So this notion that LGBT people are fighting against, you know, that's the most idiotic and stupid notion in the universe because, first of all, it's based on the premise that they don't want these things that you're claiming they're fighting against, like liberty, mm -hmm. freedom of religion, freedom of speech. Yeah, no, we don't want any of those things either. So we're, come on, give me a break. <laughs> Jesus said, if they're not against me, they're for us. If they're not against us, they're for us. That's right. uh, so... You know, it's so easy to try to point to everything. That's the, That's the devil. That's the devil. That's the devil. That's the devil. A lot of people point at the Pharaoh and say, oh, the enemy's sure using him. No, he's not. That's right. God was. God was using Pharaoh. Mm -hmm. Oh, the enemy's sure using Obama. No, he's not. God is using Obama. Amen. Oh, the enemy sure did bring in Hurricane Katrina. No, he did not. God brought in Katrina. I prophesied a year before Katrina happened. Yeah, I know. I said exactly what God said was why these things were going to come to pass. Mm -hmm. God gave me the reasoning for why these things were going to come to pass. And by God, when Katrina came, if everything God had said to me about why mm -hmm. didn't prove itself to just right down the line, He said, I'm going to show you, you cannot count on your government. That's I'm right. going to show you, you cannot count on your federal programs and your federal organizations. For instance, FEMA. Right. Because Katrina showed us real fast that FEMA could not be counted on. It was worthless. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to show you that you cannot count on your, your uh, military for your security. That's right. And boy, did or did not Hurricane Katrina prove all those points. Mm -hmm. And yet I prophesied a year before, almost to the day, a year before, God said, next year is going to be hellacious, and here's what I am going to be showing you by reason of what is about to happen. Mm -hmm. And it happened exactly the way. Mm -hmm. You see, God proved exactly what he said he was going to prove by reason of the events of that year. Okay, so we need to understand this concept and this principle. It's important to understand that... Uh, God is going to work according to his will and his purpose and his plan. He is going to use who he's going to use, however he's going to use them. Mm -hmm. whether, it, it, whether it's using somebody for, quote, the good or using somebody, quote, for the bad, you know, right. for good or evil. God mm -hmm. is using them to fulfill his purpose and his mm -hmm. plan. But by the same token, as we said earlier tonight, and I want to close on this positive thought, mm -hmm. he will have mercy on whom he will have mercy. Mm -hmm. God is not bound by the dictates of the flesh. Yes, he will go in whatever direction he chooses and he sees fit. And he will always go according to what he sees happening in the heart. Right. Not what he sees happening in the flesh. That's right. Amen. So, honey, if you think that the door is closed to you of grace simply because you're LGBT, guess again. Mm -hmm. God is looking beyond your flesh, That's and he's right. looking Amen. at your heart.
-hmm. And if you'll get it in your head and you'll understand tonight what this preacher is telling you, God has declared, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy. I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. I will choose Jacob over Esau every time. Because even though Esau would appear to be the one who should receive the blessing and the promise. That's right. It was Esau, excuse me, it was Jacob, yep. even though Esau appeared, it was Jacob who wanted it. That's right. And because right. he wanted it, he was willing to fight for it. Yeah. Amen. All right, would you bow your heads with me tonight?